So for those of you who don't know, my name is Roland Rivera. I am the Global Fuel CTO here at Cohesity Now. I've been here for quite some time, enjoying my time here, doing some great stuff. Uh, we develop and changing the world as we kind of go through it every day, day by day. So let's kind of go over the vision and the strategy that's been set forward by our founder. Before we do that, let me give you a bit of the information, uh, some of the things that we're doing. Obviously, uh, a bit about Cohesity in terms of the profile. Uh, Cohesity was founded in 2013 by Mohit Aaron. I hope everyone now knows who Mohit is. Obviously, the co-founder of Nutanix and one of the leading engineers of the Google file system, which is you see, there's a lot of good pedigree, particularly within, uh, within him himself directly. Um, in terms of the team that are sort of leading in the helm at Cohesity, obviously, we have members from some of the established companies in the industry, ranging from VMware, EMC, Palo Alto, NetApp, and some of the ones you see here that we actually all have some sort of familiarity with. In terms of the support, that we have from uh, venture capitalists. You can see some of the top tier sort of investors that we have, SoftBank being one of the biggest ones that we've had as of recent days. In terms of customers, we have a lot of enterprise customers. The majority of the customers for Cohesity come from the enterprise, large enterprise. Um, and when it comes to how the company's doing, obviously we're doing it pretty well. We're doing pretty well in terms of growth, 300 revenue growth year over year. And in terms of the number of enterprise customers, it keeps growing on a daily basis. So it's pretty good, right? So as much as that, just understand that we're pretty stable and we're doing pretty well thanks to the product and the things that are being developed here. So let's kind of jump on an analogy real quick because obviously in the past we've discussed a lot of the things that we do at Cohesity and sometimes it's better to kind of draw upon something that we're all familiar with so that we can actually relate to it. So in terms of one of the things that were pretty uh, groundbreaking in the days when we all carry these many devices to achieve what we wanted to do, whether it be take a photo, call someone, calculate you know, the tip you have to leave in the, in the restaurant before you, when you paid your, your meal and your expensive meal with everyone in, involved, became pretty challenging. Carrying that many devices uh, became a problem because we didn't have space, it became challenging. Also we had to buy things all the time, which was not you know, the perfect way to do that. There was an innovation in the uh, consumer space by several vendors, two in particular deliver something called the smartphone. So when you think about what the smartphone was able to achieve by unifying and collapsing all of those different devices and the utilizations of, of a requirement to use these different devices for different things, it collapsed several uh, silos in order to provide them in a way which is simplified, more efficient, and better. By collapsing and consolidating multiple devices into one, we get better efficiency, better utilization of some things we have to do. The big thing that everyone sort of talks about and it's being the simplification of the, the, the user interface and the user experience. One of the toughest things to achieve is simplification. And I can tell you that from experience in my past, where I worked before and some of the things we did to deliver certain products. Here, that's number one. And one of the things you'll see is that in order to achieve simplification to manage information in applications, it's very, very challenging because there's a lot of risk in there and we don't want to take anything away from uh, what customers are used to having. Being able to learn and, and get uh, you know, machine learning uh, efficiencies from what these devices and these products can do it's incredible. Let me give you one real example. I tend to go to this particular mall in LA where every time I park my car, I rely on my phone to tell me where the car is. The other day I had to change my phone and it was a brand new one, it was replaced. I couldn't find my car for 45 minutes. And that's not good because I wasted 45 minutes of my life trying to find my phone. That capability, I relied upon my phone telling me where my car was so that I can actually get to it. So that sort of example kind of relates directly to some of the efficiencies that are delivered to so some of the machine learning capabilities that some of these devices can do, right? When it comes to running applications and, 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 and being able to do this kind of thing, obviously one of the greater innovations here was the fact that we were able to deliver, or the companies were able to deliver an, an, app, an app store, let you do something more with the, with the data and some of the things that you have within your phone itself. That delivers value. That changed the game as we know it today. When it comes to what we're doing at Cohesity, we take the same approach. And some of you guys may have already heard some of the things we do, some of the many things that we do with our platform. But since we're going to focus on the fact of, of this sort of journey that the enterprise has taken to the cloud, when you talk about a journey and moving to the cloud, it's not necessarily something that happens as a form of a transformation all the time. It's as in the form of a, using a cloud for a consumption model. Because the reality is that whenever a company decides to move on to and adapt another <coughs> type of uh, infrastructure, in this particular case, a public cloud, there's a lot that goes through that, right? Today, uh, when we look at this approach, it's not the same as it was 10 years ago. A company decides to uh, embark on this particular journey, and it's a lot that it takes to get to that point effectively. 
So here, when you think about what happens in cloud, as the world evolves and things move and change, there's a lot of native applications that are born within the cloud and they continue to expand. So we have to, obviously we now have this sort of SaaS approach, which you know, for any new application that's born in the cloud, stays in the cloud, is more efficient in the cloud. We have all these sort of native applications. But the reality is that not every company is capable or able to get or adopt a public cloud model first. While some companies do have a cloud first model, it is very challenging to actually achieve uh, and get to that point because they have to still coexist with the customized applications they have and the packages that are built in house. The majority of the companies today that are, as we call them, legacy or, or work in that transformation process still have to maintain and keep all of these applications. Moving forward, you start seeing that um, a lot of these companies and a lot of these software components that are actually evolving with the time, such as, let's say, for example, SAP, are looking to move in all of their customers to SAP HANA, which runs in the cloud natively. Right? That'll take, obviously, some time. I spent some time while I was at VMware working on some of the things with some of the other companies where replatforming an application is not as easy as some folks may think it is. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, from the application perspective, not just the infrastructure. So it takes a lot of time to get that right and get it done effectively. So when it comes to this, obviously, let's kind of take a look at some of the, some of the challenges, some of the things that are applied when it comes to uh, some of the application-specific requirements that we look at and how we can make this sort of transformation possible within the actual infrastructure going through, a, through the public cloud. So now here, one of the things that is, are, are misconstrued a lot of times is the fact that we think that going to the cloud simplifies everything. And in reality, it doesn't. You are basically offloading an operating procedure, but you're not necessarily becoming a lot simpler because the same problems that exist in the on-premises data center today makes this, it can actually get even worse at this level. But customers tend to use the public cloud for different use cases, whether it be backup, data protection, archival, test and dev, analytics, DR. Many of those use cases that make it possible today uh, for the cloud to have even more value than it did in the past are achievable today, but it's tough to do that. Right? It's tough to actually get to that point. The fragmentation still exists. The same silos are still placed in the cloud. The same inefficiency uh, problem exists in the cloud just as well as they do on-premise. On but the biggest problem is still today that you, have the, you, you don't have the ability to always look at your information, which today, as has been said many, many times, data is the new oil. Right? You want to be able to extract information as much as you can possibly from it so that you can have a, a, a business gain and advantage or be able to adhere to compliance and things that actually matter in the world today. It is very tough to do that. That problem is not going away by putting something in the cloud. You actually lose some type of control, some type of integration, which you have to have the right solutions in place to achieve what you want. Bringing that along and bringing it to the point where we actually compare it and, and put it into contrast with the on-premise data centers, we face the same typical problems. Same challenges exist here, just the same as we provided before and we talked about it before. All these different challenges that are faced within the actual on-premise data center, as well as the public cloud, creates a problem that everyone in the world is suffering from. What we call mass data fragmentation is something that exists. It's not a marketing term, it's a reality. There's too many copies of information. There's too many silos. There's too many things that are going around that make it impossible for us humans to keep track of information effectively and keep the world in compliance the way we need to do, right? Too many moving pieces, too many moving parts. So how do we fix that? How do we take a stab at trying to correct a problem that affects and it impacts every enterprise and every company potentially in the world? One way in which we think about this is we simplified the approach of managing information in the data that you have, starting from your protected information. Delivering a single platform that allows you to uh, place and store your workloads and data across on-premise in your public cloud of choice. Here we're able to protect and cover the same use cases as we had before, backup and recovery, long-term retention, all of these capabilities that are available here make it even better. But what are we doing to simplify this? Obviously, when you have multiple clouds, there are multiple interfaces, multiple nomenclature, there are different objects and constructs that are called out by different uh, vendors. Manageability is key. Losing track of management is a big problem. So we introduce the ability to manage your infrastructures, your data, your applications from a centralized UI, truly abstracting everything location from either cloud, public, public private, whatever it is. Right? Not only do we apply a way of managing it, something that is e efficient and great, but we also introduce the ability to leverage machine learning capabilities from within those systems. Now you'll be able to identify when things are going to go either way, either bad or good, or identify some of the capabilities that the system can actually deliver in terms of value to your infrastructure, to your business. 
Okay? One big improvement that we've done here is the ability to running applications within that same platform. This is game changing. Because now what this fixes and addresses is we have built, sorry, we have the ability to now deliver an ecosystem, a market store, a, a marketplace where you'll have applications that are developed by Cohesity as a vendor. You have applications that are developed by third party vendors of your choice, applications that you may have, or even customers themselves. The point here is that you're now able to leverage and extract value from the data that you already have. No longer is your backups, your data protection, useless. You can leverage it for more than just restoring information or even running test and dev environments. DR is also something that's really big. But being able to extract information from your data without having to move it and exposing yourself to risks of you know, unauth unauthorized access, leaks, and you know, things of that nature is key and beneficial to the world because today that's something that we have to be mindful of. Those are some of the things that we have available now at Cohesity and some of the things that make it possible for us to take a stab at fixing the problem with massive data fragmentation. Okay? Obviously, some of the key differentiators for Cohesity are focused around some specific technology points. When you look at what we have in terms of space efficiency capabilities, we obviously have you know, well-defined, at scale, distributed type of scale efficiency capabilities, such as dedupe and compression, different variable length and all that stuff. Being able to have application and data mobility. You'll see some of the things that we're going to show you today here and what we introduce and what we have for moving application and data across different type of platforms. Virtualized, physical, application-based, some pretty game-changing stuff. One of the things that I like to sort of uh, hone in all the time is the ability to mitigate risk from operational procedures. How do we achieve that? Right? We have to eliminate the human error as much as we possibly can. How do we achieve that? We map requirements from your infrastructure, from your business, to a policy-driven framework in terms of the jobs and the tasks that are achieved and performed with your information as it is moved, replicated, managed, whichever way you want to do it. You'll see how we have this policy framework that allows the automation of the system, and it helps you be more effective, maintain SLA, and, and adhere to compliance much more efficiently than we did in the past. We have the ability to have application integration. You'll see how some of the things that we can do and how, and, and how we have evolved and changed the game a little bit in terms of how we integrate to applications themselves. We are in the business of adding value to the infrastructure, not trying to rip and replace something else, whether it be in the cloud or whether it be on premise. Right? But we're native cloud sort of uh, approach. We're you know, built, born to the cloud, just as some of these newer, newer applications are being developed and delivered. And we expect our customers to kind of get to that particular point as well. So we'll have now some of our illustrious folks and technical SMEs who come up and actually give you uh, the, uh, you know, you'll go through some of the slides and presentations that I have, and you'll see some really, really good demonstrations of how actually the product really works. Right? It's all about seeing how we achieve what we say that we are achieving and how we can actually solve this potential problem for mass data fragmentation. 